Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and in this video I'm going to show you how I constructed the first of Chandwell's station buildings. This low relief station front, complete with travel centre, WH Smiths and dingy stinking toilets. I showed my design process in a previous video, but I did forget to show how I adjusted the spacing of the windows so that they aligned perfectly with the canopy. Using the actual templates that became the canopy, I ensured that the apex of each roof aligned with the centre of the first floor windows, and this lends a pleasing symmetry to the building as a whole. The building is based on Chester Station, and I noticed the relief that the arches have. There's a definite rim around each arch. To get this effect, I printed the wall in two parts and stuck them to half millimetre card. The front piece has arches which are one millimetre wider than the lower piece. I wrapped the upper recesses before doing this to give the impression of relief in the brickwork, like at Chester. I stuck the pieces back to back with PVA glue and I clamped them with clamps while I worked. Finally, once done, I weighed the whole thing down with a pile of books and this prevents any curling of the card. Once the glue was set, I wrapped the stonework paper around the window openings to give the impression that the wall is solid. I love the feeling of 3D relief on Chester's station, so I created strips of stone detail and I stuck them along with the sills and lintels, again to half millimetre card. It was easy to cut the straight pieces with a scalpel and ruler and gently stick these to the building with PVA glue. I turned the wall upside down and nudged the top piece against my mat to ensure that it was aligned with the top of the wall properly. The lovely piece that runs across the tops of the arches, however, was a little bit more tricky. I cut the straight lines using the ruler and then gently cut the arches by hand using lots of very light strokes with a sharp scalpel. There were nine to do in total and it took quite a while. I took care to get the piece cut out in one hole but a surprising effect happened once it was cut. So the arches seemed to act like a kind of spring, and with it aligned at one end of the building, it was a clear two or three millimetres too long at the other end. It turned out it was just the springiness of the arches pushing it apart. So I cut it into three pieces and mounted each one individually, taking care to keep them straight and in alignment with the window openings. I used some stone coloured paint to fill in the occasional bit that I'd missed, such as the exposed corners of the walls. I used the sticky label technique to make the windows, again based on those at Chester, and they worked out really well. I made a video of this technique, and I've linked to it at the end of this video if you'd like to see it. The building is only 2cm deep, but I wanted to give the impression of it being much larger. I printed some tiled effect paper and made some steps with 1mm card. Glued together, this made a little box with some steps in, which I could place behind the wide arch to give the impression of some steps up to the front street, which at this part of the layout is higher than the ground at the front of the layout. Once in place, I think this looks really effective, and since it'll only ever be seen at the tight angle from the front of the layout, you'll never tell that the steps don't actually go anywhere. I used the same approach to make the toilets. I don't think they will ever be seen from a normal viewing angle, but I still enjoyed making the tiny signs for the doors. To give the impression of life behind the windows, I printed the interior of a newsagent in a travel shop. Massively over scale, it doesn't matter, they'll never truly be seen, but it simply breaks up the white interior of the card room. Once the building was complete, I glued it to the baseboard, taking extreme care to get it in perfect alignment with the canopy. If I had it off, even by just a couple of millimetres, then the windows would not align properly and the cohesive effect would be lost. I needed to stop the building bending forwards due to the slight unevenness of the platform at this point, so I glued it to the back seam and I used books and bottles to keep it in place while the glue set. The challenge that I had with the canopy was that it needs to be completely removable whilst still being able to be lit. I made holes in the front of the building through which I passed wires that were wired up to the lighting wiring of the layout. These will push against copper tape on the end of the canopy to which the canopy's LEDs are wired. 
To my surprise and relief, my very first test of this approach was a complete success. The canopy lit up and remained completely removable. On a test in the dark, there was light bleeding from the bottom of the building, but this was easy to fix with a couple of beads of PVA glue, and then once dry, a light dusting of dark weathering powder. I decided not to put any lights in the upper windows, but the bleed from the LEDs below was showing. I used red tape to hold the LEDs in place, and it was giving the whole area a kind of red glow. I solved this by simply gluing some black card over the backs of the windows. I made a roof from simple card. Thank you to my friend Tim for helping me work out the most efficient way to get the angles of the hipped roof right. I'll be doing an Inkscape video on making roofs in the near future, so watch out for that if you're interested. I added a final few coats of AK Interactive Matte and Ultra Matte Varnish. The sun never shines in Chandwell, as you well know. John at Exhaven Harbour, however, commented on my last video and told me that the sun always shines over in Exhaven. So I decided that the people of Chandwell should be told of this, and I made this little A1 sized poster for the wall of the station. It's even printed well enough to be made out by the camera, if not the naked eye. So I'm sure, John, that once they see that, the people of Chandwell will be straight on the 1222, which is about to depart from Platform 1. I'm moving on to the side building, portico and clock tower next. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up by using the button below. This really does encourage me to keep making Chandwell videos. Thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.